Yo, what is going on, everyone? Welcome to Valcast, episode number two. Uh, got some new people, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Josh, what's up once again? Hey, buddy. How's she going, eh? Uh, pretty good. Uh, and we also got, uh, I don't know, how do you want to be announced? Whiskey? Hades? I don't know. Uh, Whiskler, Hades, Hades, I don't care. Either way, it works for me. Alright, either way, perfect. So, yeah, uh, we got Josh here, we got Whiskey. Um, yeah, how you guys doing? What's up? Doing pretty good. Um, relaxing at home and waiting for you to get this thing rolling. <laughs> yeah, working on it. What about you, Josh? What's up, dude? I'm doing good, man. Just got done playing some mini gel. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you were playing with Luke. Yeah, right. Yeah. You guys win? Uh, I know. Uh, we lost a couple games on 6-on-6, six six and then we had a troll defense on 3-on-3, three three, so we lost. Oh, shit. Gotta love it when it does that. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so... <clears throat> God, I'm losing my voice. So I was going to start off the podcast with the Avalanche's 10-game winning streak. So sadly, I was going to do this like an hour ago, and it looks like their streak's over. So that that didn't really work. That's not good. I don't know. What do you guys think about it, though? 10-game winning streak. I mean, 10-game winning streak is pretty, pretty good there. Um, not going to lie, it won't be what it was like for the Minnesota Wild and for... Um, Columbus last year and whatnot, but it, if a team goes uh, ten games in a row with winning, hey, that's that's a that's amazing. Oh, definitely. What about you, Josh? What do you think, dude? Yeah, same thing as what the other guy said. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, he's been on he's been on fire lately, and uh, Bernie had a couple games where he did absolutely amazing. I just hope that they keep winning, which they lost tonight, but hopefully they can keep it going. Yeah, who did they uh, lose to? I don't even know. Montreal. Oh, there you go. That's good. Nice Canadian team. We'll take it. <laughs> Where are you from, Whiskey? Where was it? Minnes- Minnesota? Oh, no. yeah. Minnesota. Okay. Awesome, dude. Yeah, because we're both Canadian, so... Yeah, all right. Yeah. Nice to have an American <laughs> here. That's pretty cool. Just... But, yeah. You gotta admit, though, um, you can't just... Put it on McKinnon's um, back and whatnot about it, but you gotta admit that you know the defense for them is playing pre- pretty darn well. Varlamov has been doing amazing lately, stopping everything left and right. I mean, Varlamov and their defense are pretty much back to where back when Patrick Rao was their coach. And you know, if they keep going this way like they are, um, I predict that they're probably gonna go into the playoffs. Yeah, I hope. So. Yeah. I agree. I don't follow uh, Colorado much as I'm a league fan, so I try to follow teams in the East, but yeah, that's a good point. Straight up. Uh, so yeah, um, I guess their streak's over. kind of sucks. If we did the podcast like maybe an hour earlier, we would have been talking about who's going to beat them and shit, so I guess we know. That's good. All right, yeah. Damn. I'm not going to lie. I probably would have told, probably would have said Montreal's going to kick them in the square of the butt today, so... <laughs> well, you're right then, that's for sure. Alright, cool. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, uh, Sadin's out of Vancouver, so I guess their contract's gonna be coming up. Do you think they're gonna leave, or what? Um, I'm not quite sure, because they've been there for their whole career, um, and, I don't know, um, you know, Vancouver has supported them throughout their whole career and everything, and, you know, they're, but they, Vancouver has to decide on, you know, keeping two 37-year-olds on their team or go for younger talent and extend their contracts and go look forward into their, um, into the future instead of, you know, keeping the veterans there and whatnot. But also, you know, Sedin's, I've been consistent lately and everything, the past couple of years on their points, making sure that, you know, teaching the kids and everything, so it's it's a toss-up. Yeah. I mean, they could always get split up and stuff, too. It happened during, like, the All-Star game, like, a few years ago, so who knows. Oh, yeah. You, you don't know where they'll go. You don't 
know if they're going to go on the same team together or or they're going to go separate ways. It just depends on, you know, what Vancouver thinks and what they're going to do. Yeah. What's your opinion, Josh? What up? Yeah, like uh, the other guy was saying, they, they are 37, and I do see them leaving uh, Vancouver because obviously they're, they're going to want a Stanley Cup ring, so I can see them going to, like, Washington, Pittsburgh, or they can go to Chicago. Yeah, I don't know. Just uh, It seems odd, though, seeing them off Vancouver. doesn't feel like human, I guess. Well, yeah, and that's kind of like how it was for Toronto for a bit when they got rid of Kessel. It was very, very odd to see Kessel in a um, in a Pittsburgh jersey for a bit, and now people are starting to get used to it. So you don't know what it's going to be like in you know a couple of years and whatnot, being on a different team. But yeah, I can definitely agree with you with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. damn right. All right. And they're obviously going to want to play together because they have chemistry. Yeah, for sure. Do you think they'll be split up though? Like, do you see it happening? No, I don't, but you never know. Yeah? No, I I don't. Oh, damn. All right. Well, hopefully they stay there, though. I don't know. I just see them as Vancouver. I don't know. Maybe it's just a childhood thing. Who knows? Whatever. Uh, damn. Uh, I should have thought of more things to, like, ask and shit, because, yeah, we were going to have to think about a lot. All right. Uh, damn. Golden Knights. Uh, you think they're living up to the hype? They're doing pretty damn good. I, I think they're exceeding the hype, actually. Um, there's a lot of announcers that actually thought that they were going to go, you know, 500 or even less than that. Some of them said, yep, they're going to bulldoze and bomb rush everybody because of all the veterans that they picked up. And, but at the same time, they didn't know because... Some of the teams that have been expansion ones and whatnot, their first two years, it took a while for them to get chemistry or get the chemistry together and whatnot. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they, um, the Golden Knights have been, you know, the chemistry's been there. Um, they have an equalization of between new guys and veterans. And I think they're just going to keep going forward, and I think that you're going to be seeing them go into the, into the playoffs. Yeah, hopefully they're doing good. Oh, Josh, 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 what up, dude? What do you think, my dude? <laughs> um, I don't follow Golden Knights that uh, closely, but uh, they have a good team. Like, uh, a lot of them players, people, other teams wanted to keep them, but obviously you can't keep everybody, so I th- thought they were going to have a horrible year. But uh, Malcolm Subban and um, uh, Flurry are having – tremendous years like they got two great goalies they got some good defense forwards and yeah I, I can't wait to watch them in the playoffs and hopefully they go deep damn right dude well put damn yeah so hopefully they do make it i mean yeah i don't know they're doing pretty damn good well they got one thing that's kind of surprised to me is that they got three people go in the all-star that's including their coach um their head coach is head coach for their d- division, um, the Marc-Andre Fleury is in there, and so is James Neal. Um, yeah, those guys are both veteran players, but, you know, having three people in the, your division in there, that's quite insane for this day and age. Yeah, you don't really see it yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dun, 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 dun. let's go. How about the Coyotes? Let down? What's up? I don't know. Because they're doing pretty damn shit. Um, they've been doing pretty shitty for the past, like, what, five, six years? They've, you know, they've either been a 500 team or all the way down to the bottom of the standings. And, you know, they need to get some people in there in order to, you know, and not rely on one, two, three players, you need to get a bunch of guys together and and get the whole team together and get that chemistry because they don't have that at all. Yeah, it seems like it. Mm. I mean, I understand that they won yesterday.
yesterday in OT and whatnot, but mm -hmm. and they're on a two game winning streak, which you know two game winning streak is all right. You're doing good, good job and whatnot, but still they have to rack up the, these wins here or else they're going to be just like every other year on the bottom and not have a chance to go in, into playoffs at all. They need to do some changes, whether it's, you know, coaching, whether it's the players, whether, you know, any, they need, they need to do something. Yeah, definitely. What do you think, Josh? I really don't have anything to say about Arizona. Like, they, they've been bad, like the other guy said, for many, many years. And obviously, they need to get a number one goalie, like Anta Ranta, whatever the hell his name is. He's not a number one goalie, and neither is the other guy they have. And they got to get better forwards, and maybe maybe they got to relocate. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I got to focus on that one. Well, well, what's kind of surprising about it, though, is, is that what, look at Mike Smith, their number one goalie for how many years and everything. Yeah, he's a great goalie and everything and whatnot. Then he went bombshell down and everybody thought he lost his spark and whatnot. He got traded to a different team and all of a sudden look at him right now in Calgary. He's freaking doing amazing. He's going to the All-Star Games yep. and everything just in one year of getting traded over to Calgary. You, you know, you, you can't just... Like I said, you can't just backpack yourself on just one or two players like they are. They can't just rely on just a goalie to stop everything and hope to God they win by one to zero or something every single game. And, you know, that pretty much explains it. You know, them all of a sudden bringing, you know, their backup and secondary backup in and hoping to God that and crossing their fingers that they can turn into a number one goaltender, but they're not. They're backup goal goalies that don't have that experience or the talent to stay in that net and for the 60 minutes or more than that in the net and hold their team to a lead. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's true. I mean, teams are meant to do bad. Not everyone's going to have a great season, but I mean, Phoenix has been doing it for a long... Well, sorry, Arizona. They've been doing it for a while. I just... Uh, not really doing great. No. I don't know why I keep saying Phoenix. What the hell? Because uh, um, that's what they used to be called. Well, yeah, <laughs> but it's like... They used to be called Phoenix Coyotes, now they're Arizona Coyotes. Yeah, for sure, but it's like I shouldn't be saying that because it's not even right. <laughs> Damn. Oh, wow. I don't know. Uh, I know we talked about this, uh, me and Josh, in the last podcast we did but uh i don't know let's talk about it uh matthews or line a uh who got the better you know draft pick or whatever it's up to whoever wants to go first it's up to you guys uh i'm not quite sure about that one um that's a toss-up to me quite frankly because both those guys are really great players What do you think, Josh? I like Matt. I like yeah. Matthews. His first game, he had what four goals. Yeah. And, he, and then his first season, he had forty goals. I don't know how many, how much line they had, but I could just imagine he probably had over thirty. But I'm a Leaf fan, so I'm obviously gonna pick Matthews. And even if I wasn't a Leaf fan, I would still pick Matthews. Yeah, he seems to be doing a lot better. I mean, again, line is good, but I'm with you on that, Matthews for sure. What do you gotta think of too, though, is that you know, Line A, yeah, Line A did amazing last year. He had sixty point, I believe it was what sixty plus points, kind of like what Matthews had as well, and and everything. But you know, him getting those minor in injuries that were you know day to day injuries and whatnot, him, him getting hit really hard and whatnot, his mentality is not there anymore. And you know, Matthews, yeah, he's got kind of injured and whatnot, but he comes back up and it's bull rushes everybody and scores a crap ton of goals all the next time that he's on, on the on the ice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess who? I don't know. Probably Matthew's better pick? Line A? I guess it's just really tough to choose. For, for us talking about it, my, my vote has gone to Matthew's. Because, you know, for two years, he, for the past, you know, his rookie year, he he was an all-star. This year, he's an all-star. You know, 
this is probably a guy that's going to be going to the all-star game like Corey Price or like um, Sam Coses or Crosby is. He's just going to keep going every single year. Uh-huh. That'd be pretty good. And I think, Matthews, I think Matthews' contract's up this year. And you know he's going to want more than what McDavid makes. Oh, God, yeah. He's going to definitely make one of make more than what McDavid makes indefinite but you know you got, you got to think of too is that McDavid is you know that everybody's saying McDavid's the next the next Gretzky and you know yeah. Matthews is slowly you know saying bumping up there saying hey I'm in that area as well so yeah I can definitely understand that you know he's going to want a bigger paycheck but I'm pretty sure Toronto is not going to give him the paycheck that he wants that like did like McDavid has. Yeah. Um, Stamkos and Kucherov, they're they're good. And just hopefully they don't choke in the playoffs because you know they're going to make the playoffs. So I just hope that they keep it up. It, I think it's more of, you know, not just, you know, the forwards and whatnot that are going to choke and whatnot, but I think it's going to be more their goalie. The goalie was a backup for Bishop for some for two or three years here, and now he ha- is having his opportunity to come out and show how much ta- how talented he is, yeah. Yeah, proving himself and everything, being you know one of the best goalies in the league as of right now, and whatnot could get to your head pretty badly, and all of a sudden he could choke really badly on some simple shots that go five hole or low sides. And you know, they could, he could be the reason of them either going further into the Stanley Cup or um, not making it for, past the first round. That's true. Yeah, Vasilevsky's doing insane this year. Yeah, he has like seven shuttles already. Yeah. Which is unheard of. Yeah. I mean, the last, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here because I'm, from Minnesota or whatnot, but the last person that I've noticed that has ever done that was Dubnik. And and also Corey Corey Price, um, hopefully, um, and a couple other goalies have done it before, but the recent people that I've seen that have done that is Dubnik and Valeski. Yeah, Dubnik's a good goalie. He, he sucked in, um, in Edmonton, but he picked it up when he came to Minnesota. Yeah, he was also a part of... He's another guy, actually, that was part of the Coyote um, team, actually. He was a backup for Smith. Yeah. And quite frankly, looking looking back at that decision that they did of, you know, trading him to us and everything, I don't know, what, what do you guys think? Are they, you think Coyote, the Coyotes are kind of banging their head against the wall for, for that, um, for them doing that? Yeah. Probably. I can see that. Just like when the Leafs had Tuka Rask, and they basically traded him for a bag of pucks, and look what he's doing now. He's an, he's an amazing goalie for, for Boston. That is true. That is very true. And like and like all them other picks, like if you go back, like you could look on YouTube and stuff, that all the Leafs' o- uh, first overall, uh, overall picks they traded, they could have got Roberto Luongo, they could have got Scott Niedermeyer when they traded them two first-round picks for Kessel. Uh, one of them first round picks uh, was ended up to be Dougie Hamilton, and he's on he's on Calgary now, and he's doing absolutely amazing. He's a first first line defense. He could be playing with Riley if uh, the Leafs kept that pick. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. But yeah, I like Dubnik. He's a great goalie. Damn. Heck yeah. One thing I think that um. I looked at the uh, fantasy uh, power rankings and everything. That's kind of that's on NHL Network for the top 100 players as a as a player and everything. And I have seen that you know um, Steven Stamkos has dropped down four positions on the on the stats and everything because of the past couple of games he hasn't produced any points that much. He's I think he's only had. I don't know if I don't know if this is right or wrong. Um, don't quote me on it or anything, but I think he's only had like two or three points the past couple games, and he and 
and just for that and everything, because everybody else has gotten points, they dropped him down dramatically because of that reason. And I just think that, you know, they shouldn't punish the guy. The guy's still a deadly guy, and he has, what, 45, almost 50 points? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same with, like, Kucherov. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah. Kucherov's doing fucking insane, dude. Holy shit. I don't know. Oh. That's true, man. Points. Kucherov has 61 points, and Stamkos has 54. Yeah, and they're punishing him because Kucherov has been gaining points still from every single game and whatnot. And I think Stam- Stamkos <laughs> got a couple points this past, like I said, two or three points the past couple games that they've lost. And, you know, I get it and everything that, you know, the team captain and, and the head person of the team is not doing that hot and everything. But, you know, you can't just punish one guy. Why did, why did they keep, you know, Kucherov at number one and, and whatnot and drop Stamkos like, like he is? The guy is still, no matter how, how, which way you look at it and whatnot, Stamkos is still a pretty deadly guy, and they two-man him and make sure that he he can't get open or whatnot at all to get a goal or get yeah. a puck at all. Mm-hmm. That's true. <clears throat> damn, so Tampa, I can't even talk. Tampa Bay is doing pretty damn good. I guess we can all agree on that. Oh, damn. What about, uh, I know we talked about this last time, about Vertigo with Crawford, but I don't know, what do you think is going to happen to Chicago? Um, I really don't know, but I really think that they should definitely figure out out their goalie situation right now. If, if, uh, I don't know how long, I know that, um, Crawford is in practices now and everything, but they have to think of what if he re-injures it. Um, re-injures, re-injures his um hit his upper body injury that they're saying and re-injures that at practice and then all of a sudden he's out again. That's happened before. It happened to Zach Creasy. It's happened to um Crosby. It's happened to Malkin and a bunch of other guys too. Um, that they re-injure their their injury and they're out for longer. So I think they should definitely go and find a different goalie other than Forsberg or Glass because what both of them have won three games each. Um, they're both they're both th- um, their goals against are in the three three point O's. Yeah, their save saving percentage are are ninety percent save rates, but you got to think of you know they're lo- they're only winning six games out of fourteen out of. Let's see here. Twenty out of twenty games, have won six. That the uh, that the backups have been in. And quite frankly, I think they need to go see if they can find uh, another Granite or another um, another goalie, Lenny Granite, to get back behind them. So that at least they know for a fact that even if Crawford falls, there's somebody there to take the slack. And right now, they don't have that. What do you think, Josh? Um, yeah, I think they need a the goalie. Maybe not like a permanent goalie, but maybe like a backup. Like, uh, f- just for the year until Crawford comes back. And then I was thinking maybe maybe they can go to Vegas because they have uh, Flurry and they have Malcolm Subban. So maybe they could trade for Flurry. Oh, damn. But at the same time, Flurry's doing absolutely amazing because you're not going to want to trade Malcolm Subban because he's, he's only a kid. He's only young. And I don't know any other goalies that are on the market that they could trade for. Quite frankly, I don't know either. And, you know, yeah, they could definitely go for, you know, Marc-Andre Fleury for indefinite just for, you know, a guy to be a backup. But, you know, at the same time, I don't think uh, Marc-Andre Fleury will actually take that deal at all because then he's going from being a main starter – and being this um this guy that's a team leader and everything for Vegas to a backup in Chicago when you know what will happen to him when 
when um, Crawford comes back. You know, yeah. if you, if you're basically putting a starter as a backup, and you're just, and you know, Crawford don't need a guy like Flurry to teach him how to do stuff. You know, both of them have been around the block. Both of them have won Stanley Cups, and you know, I don't. I think more of you know, like, um, almost like either either grab someone from. Grab the backup from the Canadians. Grab the backup from the Blues, or or even you know, grab the back from the Wild. Like Staylock, he he's having a ninety two percent save rate. Yeah, he's you know his win and losses are not there. His goals against are in the twos and everything. He has potential and everything. And you know, if you if you think of you know a backup to actually like take their position, I think those three teams will be probably a better option for them than just trying to focus on just Vegas. Okay, good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, damn. Yeah, I was, I was just saying Flurry because he has playoff experience, and if they go with Staylock, I don't even think he's played in the playoffs. He might have played a couple games here and there, but I'm not 100% sure because who knows how long Crawford's going to be out for because if he's out for the rest of the year, then if they do make the playoffs, who's going to be their goalie? Exactly. Oh, yeah, and, you know, you got to think of that and everything, too, and quite frankly, if you're, if, I, I understand that Stalek like, doesn't have that type of capability, but you're also going to think of, too, he, he's played for, as a starter, as, with the Sharks and everything, yeah. and he has played as a backup in the playoffs with the Sharks as well. And he has actually went in in the playoffs with the Sharks as well, I believe. And, it, you know, it, they're, them, him as an overall guy, he's in his, in his low, thir he's 31 years old, he's, you know, in his prime time, and he's just looking for an opportunity to be a starter. Yeah. I don't know, so what do you guys want to talk about? What's up? Anything. Go for it. Shoot for the stars. Yeah, whatever, man. Don't matter. I should have got, like, more... I don't know, I should have... More more things and whatnot. Yeah, I yeah, don't know. I'm, I'm, I just did it today, right now. Oh, yeah, I can just look up, too. I don't know, just see what's going on and shit. I don't know. I know St. Louis is doing good, Did you guys though. see that hit uh, that Marchand did today? No, today. I haven't yet. Today. Yeah, he, he elbowed somebody, and I think Marcus Johansson, and he had, he went right to the dressing room. It looked like a dirty hit to me, but I have to rewatch it on YouTube when it comes out. It was, yeah, I would have to see what happened there um, to know for sure what happened. Um... Yeah, like there's uh, a thing right now that says Brad Marchand elbows Marcus Johansson in the head. Oh. Did they say if it was like a fine or anything? I don't know. It says, oh boy, Brad Marchand accidentally, they say, elbows Marcus Johansson in the face, mojo straight to the locker room, does not look good on replay. Okay, even if it was... I mean, if it... If he was headhunting, I think, if he was, you know, looking straight at the guy and, you know, put his elbow as, you know, an intentional thing, I can definitely see him being suspended for two to three games and probably fine and indefinite for that. And, um, you know, helping somebody in the face, knowing uh, me being a hockey player and, you know, being around at the NHL and every, looking around the attic, watching that show ever since I was a kid, that's a very, very, very deadly hit. I've seen people get knocked out, have highly, very high concussions, and some people even having to, you know, quit, um, quit hockey for that reason, just because of an elbow to the head. So, yeah. it, so, I mean, it all depends on how bad the, the hit was and, and everything. It's kind of like how whole back... Back a couple of years ago, where people were starting to slew foot people left and right, yeah. and everything, and people would be having ankle problems, knee knee injuries, and everything because of it, because they'd be falling right on their knee, going full speed, or even getting head injuries from that by just getting slew footed into the boards. So 
I think, uh, like I said, depending on the, what the hit looked like, I would definitely say that he's definitely going to be suspended and fined. Uh, never know. Again, me and Josh were talking about this, the whole favoritism thing, and how Cogliano got suspended for his hit, or whatever, it shouldn't have happened. Yeah. That one was a, I think that was a BS call, and everything, I think that, would, I saw that hit too, and I saw the suspension and whatnot, and how long he was suspended for it, I just went, you suspended him for that hit, why? Um, I, I don't quite understand why you know, a hit like that, I thought it was clean, you know, me being a guy that hit people left and right, and was that type of player, and everything, I, I used to hit people like that too, and, you know, it, yeah, they would get injured and whatnot, but, you know, it was a very, very clean hit, and I can definitely agree that there is a lot of favoritism with some of the more popular hockey players out there because not just because they're trying to protect them but more because of them them being a star player and you know they're looking more towards you know favor, favoring them like hey you could probably hit hit um Crosby um right in the middle of the ice and whatnot with a clean hit and you'll be suspended for two days because of it. Yeah. Just because he's Crosby. Yeah. Exactly. Agreed 100%. Uh, I don't know. It's bullshit. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Look up. <laughs> oh damn! It was like being dead. Damn. How do you guys uh, think about Blaney? Oh Bailey, my bad. Bailey, I completely butchered it. Butchered his name. Josh Bailey. Yep. Oh, yeah. he's fucking nuts, dude. Wait, did you guys say Josh Bailey? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, he used to play for the Spitfires. I watched him a couple times. In the, the OHL, but I don't follow him, so I don't know how he's doing. He's, he's like, doing... He's at the he's, top, pretty much. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I think he's in the top five right now, I think. Maybe, like, top seven, point-wise. No like that. way. Dude, he's doing nuts, dude, literally. He's doing absolutely crazy. I never thought he was that good. Yeah. Yeah. When he's, I... Um, he has 51 points, 12 goals, and 42 assists in 45 games. Yeah. When I play Ultimate Team on NHL 18, I seen him get, like, a new ice card, and I was like, damn. Like, he went up to 89, just holy shit. Um, okay. I wonder if he's playing with... There's another guy from um, <coughs> the Islanders that, are doing, that is doing good, too. Uh, Nick Letty, maybe? I don't know. There was another one. No, um, he's a rookie. Rookie. Matthew uh, Barzell. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, an ultimate team. Yeah, Barzell is doing absolutely crazy team. too. He's a twenty-year-old. He's from Canada, and he has um. Let me see. He has sixteen goals, thirty-four assists, fifty points in forty-nine games. That's amazing for him. Isn't it? I mean, for any for any rookie to get yeah, you know, in the fifty-point area before the before the half of half the season before even the All-Star game. <coughs> it's amazing. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Damn. He'll probably get rookie of the year for sure. He could probably even have more points than Matthews did in Matthews' rookie year. Oh damn. I won't. I won't be surprised if that actually happens. Because he has fifty points, and I think Matthews had forty goals, twenty nine assists. I'm pretty sure. So be, he needs nineteen points in thirty something games. That could happen. Yeah. I, I believe movies. it will happen. Oh. Uh, what's it called? Again, I think Heischer is doing pretty good. He's another one. Sergachev. So a lot of good people right now. Oh, I gotta look this up. Wow, I did not realize this. Anderson Lee? Anders Lee has 26 
27 goals. Last time I checked, that he, I think he was at 13 goals, like, three, like a couple games, like, like 15 or 16 games ago. Yeah. He's another um, New York, New York Islander. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's really good. I know this a lot by Ultimate Team and stuff, because whenever someone gets a new card, it's like, just go check their stats, and they're doing freaking crazy. A lot yeah. of them got it. I here's, here's the thing that I don't quite understand, is that, you know, there's guys, there's guys like, you know, uh, Kucherov, McKinnon, um, and like uh, Steven Stankos and all those guys that are in the top part of, you know, what I was talking about, the fantasy lead, leaderboards and whatnot, but you never see a flyer on that top 10 at all. And the both, um, how do you say their names? Voracek? Voracek and Goudreau are in the, are lower than that. Oh. Lower than the top 10. And they have 56 points and 55 points. That's so much. But two are great players. Oh, yeah. And they're absolutely amazing players. They, I, like, nobody talks about them at all. And yet they're in the top 10 for points and for top 10 for either assists or goals. And they are absolutely amazing guys, amazing players. They can hold their own and everything. I've seen Gaudreau and Horchek in fights. I've seen them fully fledged check people in the middle of the ice and and put them to the ground. They, they're all around good players and everything. But yet, for some odd reason, on the fantasy um, on the fantasy power ranks, they're no nowhere near the top. There's just so many people doing good, though. Oh, what else is there? There's something that's pretty funny for for uh, stat-wise. Um, Pulaski has seven shutouts. Ben Bishop, the old the old uh, main guy for goalie, has four. Oh, dang. Ben's doing better. Yep. Um, Valeski has 28 wins. Ben has 21. Valeski's third in sa- saving percentage. You can't even see Ben Bishop in the top 10. Same thing, and it's the same thing for goals against as well. <laughs> but was Ben Bishop, was he good when he played for Tampa? Heck yeah. Ben Bishop was amazing until he got injured. I think Bishop's on the yeah, stars now, though. Yeah. I don't hear much of Ben Bishop anymore. Yeah. Before you hear his name on everything, oh, Ben Bishop saved this, so. Yeah, true. It's like there's nothing to talk about. It's like we did everything, I swear. <laughs> Uh, what else is there? You guys think Carlson's gonna get traded? Mm. John Carlson? No, Eric Carlson from. Uh, oh, Eric. Baltimore. Oh, uh, I don't think so. I feel like he'll resign somehow. Well, hopefully, that would be that would be good for Ottawa, but. Yeah, He's going to want shitloads of money. Why, wait, where do you think he would go, though? To a high market, maybe um, maybe the Leafs, but at the same time, they gotta they got to sign uh, Matthews. Oh, yeah. Maybe to Montreal, or... Yeah, that would be kind of cool to see. Yeah.
dim. I don't know what else to say. At least for now. <laughs> you guys can hear me? No, I can't, yeah. Oh, okay. Fucking headset. Um, but I think Eric Carlson is definitely one of those guys that could be traded. Um, just because of the, st the fact that, you know, Ottawa needs to get their cap back down so then they can start signing better players or guys that are, you know, getting held back that they can get signed or get people to stay in their area because they've lost players. You got to remember, they've lost a couple players because of them trying to resign and get money for to keep Eric Carlson. Mm-hmm. You know, it's happened to many, many teams. It's happened with, you know, like I said, Air, with Arizona, with trying to keep Mike Smith, trying to keep the good goalie and whatnot. It's, it's happened to multiple teams and, and everything. It happened to, um, what's the guy from, that used to be the captain for LA Kings? Mike Richards? No, um, before him. Jeff Carter? I don't know. Dustin or something. Williams? I can't remember who it. it was him and um back he was the he was the captain of the team when they won the Stanley Cup. One way one. All I can remember is Justin Williams, but he plays for Carolina now. I don't know. Talking. All right. Uh, I don't know. Shit. Isn't Kopitar captain now? Kopitar is the captain now. Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's Dustin Lynch. I think that's what it was. I know sure. Dustin Brown. Yeah, that's what it was. Dustin that's... Brown. Okay. Yeah. He was. <laughs> he was the captain of the. Of the LA Kings for what four years, and he was on the team. He was the captain for when they won the Stanley Cups and everything. And when all of a sudden he got injured a couple times, and all of a sudden his playing went down and dipped. But yet the LA Kings wanted to keep him and everything, so they kept giving him money and everything, trying to keep him and whatnot. And they finally realized that hey. You're not the guy that you are, that you used to be, and everything. And they dropped his, drop, it was either to drop his pay or trade him. And he he went for the drop the pay part, but he also got ripped off his captain, the captain symbol, and and everything. Right. Yeah. Like to the point where right now he's not even a captain. Sure. He used to be really good. Yeah, he heck, he was him and Kopitar used to be in that top ten, top five most dangerous people to play against because they could hit, they could pass, they could shoot and do everything. And those two were the backbone and everything and kept Kopitar stayed at like he was and being a good player and Brown just went off the peak. And started and dipped down dramatically. Like he shit the bed. Mm hmm. He'll be more than just shit the bed. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I was thinking about this. Um, Josh, uh, what's it called? Whatever happened to Garrett Sparks? Um, I think he's um, the goalie in the minors for the Leafs. Oh, but he's still with them. Yeah, he's like in the minors, maybe with Antoine Weibo or something. Oh, okay. So I remember he got that shutout, and I haven't like seen him since. Yeah, he's with the minors. Last I heard. Oh, okay. Sweet, sweet. Gotta yeah, love how good goalie all of a out in the minors. Yeah. Hey, that could be another guy that you know Chicago could go for. Yeah, never thought of that. They can even go to 
Colorado and pick up Bernier. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> like, I liked him in the Leaf uniform, but I just disagreed with what management did when they brought Bernier in. Because Reimer was the goalie. Reimer was the one that brought them to the playoffs that year when they lost Game 7 to Boston. And then right after that, they went to go sign a goalie like Bernier. And Bernier would have been the number one, but I liked Reimer, and I still like Reimer. And what they did to him is they, they wrecked his confidence, and then after that, he sucked. And then right after that, Bernier sucked. Yep. And hey, that's, I, I'm sorry to say this and everything, if and whatnot, but there for a while there, you guys did have a goalie curse. Yeah. And it is true that you guys did and everything, and, you know, it sucked. You know, Raymer is a great, Raymer it is and was a great goalie. He, he is. Um, it's just, like, I agree with you 100% with them, you know, signing Bernier. It didn't spark him to do better. It freaking put his spark out dramatically, and he sucked. And they, they got rid of him, put Bernier in. Bernier sucked, and they got rid of him, too. Mm-hmm. You know, they, and, and I think they finally realized that, you know, they need to stop, keep, stop signing people and stick with, the, with stick, uh, stick with someone. Yeah. Well, hopefully they do with Anderson. Yeah, they signed Anderson to a five-year deal, $25 million last year or something. Well, oh. Anderson's a great goalie. He is. He's an absolute great goalie. Yeah. I like him. He's good. That was a very, very good pickup that they did. He's it, he's a good goalie. He's, you know, he's not the guy that showboats and everything and, you know, he's that guy that hides, hides behind all the great great goalies and then when he when you guys go to the playoffs then he shows how good he is no. yeah he was good last year heck good this year too oh yeah oh I don't know do you guys have anything else or do you guys want to call it a wrap up for an episode sure you guys talked about um stuff last week about all the things that happened then so yeah for sure maybe we'll just wait for more to come into hockey and then we'll do another episode for sure Alrighty. Yeah. oh yeah i'll be yeah, definitely down sure. to do one of these again oh damn right what did you say josh i said yeah for sure i have nothing else to say too so all right. Well, uh, thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, this has been episode two. Uh, make sure to go subscribe to these guys' channels in the description. So, uh, yeah, thanks for being here, guys. Thank you for having me, man. It's been an honor. Thank, thanks for having me, Pearl. It's been a pleasure. Hey, no problem, man. All right. Thanks, guys. You take it easy, guys. Hey, yep. you too.